Welcome back everybody, space adventurers, pirates, and uh, stormtroopers, and Jedi, and everything else that's in space! Because we're finally back with some new vlogs here. Finally! People have been wondering, where the heck are we? What are we doing? And well, we're back. We're finally back, and we're here with Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 2. I'm good. He says, welcome to the channel. We're Draken Shadow. I'm good. He says, thank you for joining us on this new vlog. In case you are new here, we do these movie vlogs on top of our Let's Plays. I'm good. Now, of course, we also want to make sure that you understand that these vlogs are unhinged and essentially full of spoilers. I'm good. And if you've not seen the movie... It's imperative that you go see it first before watching the vlog. So feel free to pause the video, add it to your watch later list or bookmark it, and uh, come back and see us and see if your opinion meshes with our opinion. I'm good. And once again, we thank you for watching. And also, as a friendly reminder, we are working hard to push to 100 subscribers and we have great incentives such as Let's Play suggestions, and other fun miscellaneous stuff you can put in the comments. Ow! I'm Groot! Okay, I'm good. I'm, I'm good now. <laughs> Welcome back to the Dragon Shadow Vlogs. And he just basically sp spelled it all out. We're back! It's been a while. It has been a while. Uh, I'm trying to think, what was the last vlog that we did this year? I did I did uh, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah. And then I think we had one after that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not coming to me. I don't think so. I think, I, I think everything we've had has either been a geek news thing or just... Yeah, that's, that's what solo. I'm thinking of because, and, and this will also be in the playlist is like, we did, we did, um, Your Name, we did Ghost of Shell, and then we did Power Rangers and all of that, that was all geek news. And so this is like the first Dragon Shadow vlog that's happened in a while. Mm -hmm. Um, now things are going to change a little bit this time around. Usually we, we go into major spoilers here and, and go over the plot as, as it comes we're not doing that yeah. this time around because I think enough people have given us feedback. Plus, it's pretty, it's always a long winded explanation. And, well, we just spelled the movie out for you. And if we are saying, you know, go see the movie, we might as well just, you know, let you go see the movie kind of yeah. thing. So I think we're going to stop doing that from here on in. I mean, obviously, you guys can let us know in the comments below if you, if you wanted it or not, but it doesn't make a whole, a whole lot of sense to continue that. Yeah, I mean, we figured we're already making this for people who've probably already seen the movie. Yeah. So, at this point, it's Maybe redundant. if it's a movie that we don't think you're, you'll are you have seen, then we'll do it. But, yeah, uh, this is one of those movies that, yeah, people are going to go see. Because, I mean, Guardians of the Galaxy was, was very, very popular back in 2014. And, uh, and it only makes sense that people will go back for this. I mean, for crying out loud, Suicide Squad was basically Warner Brothers' answer to Guardians, even though really wasn't but uh yeah so instead i think we're just going to go over like favorite moments and stuff like that so uh maybe we'll just come up with a couple of other questions to to go into so first of all um how so for people who have not watched our previous vlogs which we would encourage you to go do because we did do a, a a vlog of the original guardians of the galaxy my god has it been three years already it has it has um feels like yesterday hey really <laughs> feels like longer than that honestly it feels like a lifetime ago it does feel like a lifetime uh, like yesterday but a lifetime at the same time so for for those who are, who are coming to our vlogs brand spanking new um let's just give a quick kind of summation of like where are we at coming into this uh like were we excited for for guardians of the galaxy this is not i'm already gonna answer this one question we we both have seen guardians obviously and you've caught up with the entire Marvel movie line roughly. Mm -hmm. So at that point, it's not like you're coming in blind, you know what you're, what you're walking into, but just like, what were you, what were you thinking walking into this? Cause we did cover some of the announcements, the announcement of Sylvester Stallone and uh, Kurt Russell being in the movie, all that stuff. Like, were you optimistic walking into the film or were you thinking like they were packing it too much and we were going to get kind of a, uh, kind of a, a dud out of it? I was, I was looking forward to it. I was, I was, I enjoyed the first Guardians of the Galaxy a lot. Uh, but of course, by that same token, yeah, maybe I was a little nervous that 
you know, is this going to be as enjoyable as the first? I've had plenty of sequels where they're okay by themselves, but I never enjoy them quite as much as I enjoy the first, because the first one just becomes so strong. I, yeah, sequels very rarely live up to their yeah. to the counterpart. There are some cases where I think the sequel is better than the first, mm-hmm. but... I mean, if you want some cases and points for me personally, I'd have to say that's pretty much the original Spider-Man trilogy. I know a lot of people really love the second one and revere the second one. I enjoy the second one, but I really much like the first one the best. But well, we can both agree the third one was crap on yeah. ice, right? Okay. <laughs> and it, same with the Iron Man trilogy. Really love the first. Second and third are okay. I'm kind of there with you. I, I like Iron Man 2 a little bit more than 3, but like the, the original one is the one that set the tone mm-hmm. to me. So I'm kind of there with you. A, a case that I would actually say that like the sequel was better. Captain America, um, the Winter Soldier. Like I love the first Avenger. I, I still love it to this day. I love watching it. I love the music from it. Um, but I, I even acknowledge that the Winter Soldier is a better movie compared to that. And it's just because the first Avenger is kind of there to cover history. You don't know, you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and so there are some examples of like the, the original movie being better than the sequel, things like that. But I know for one thing, walking into this, just from discussions I'd had with friends and family, including you, it's like, how do you top Guardians of the Galaxy? Because it was really over the top. How do you do that? And, uh, and, and, and that was actually my worry walking in is like, well, you obviously have to top what you did, but you kind of can't because if you flood it too much, then that can bog down your plot. That can bog down a lot of things. And I would actually say that this, uh, walking in, I was a little apprehensive on whether or not this was going to be as good as the original Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, so now that being said, that's how we walked in. How did we walk out? Um, I like it. Me too. I, I like it. I don't, I don't know if I would necessarily say it's better or worse than Guardians of the Galaxy. I think they're really on par yeah, with each other. I'd say the same. I'd um, say it's on par with the first one just as much. Yeah, because it, it didn't go too over the top, but it wasn't making the same jokes over and over. Well, Groot aside, you know, yeah. but like, but but it felt like this is a new flavor of Groot because it was it was a little Groot stuff instead of, the, here's this big lumbering dude that just says, I am Groot all the time. Uh, instead, we got little Groot who... <laughs> In, in my opinion, is like that's the best opening title sequence ever. Just seeing everything from Groot's perspective. Yes, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> just him, the whole battle raging on around. Well, him, him trying to dancing. dance, and then and then like like one of the rat things would go by, and he tried to start wrangling him, and it, and he had to have like every single one of them come up, and most of them are trying to like shelter him from danger, except for Rocket. He was trying to get him to spit something out, but. Uh, yeah, I, I thought that was amazing, but yeah, I liked it. I, but I, I'm not going to say it's better or worse. I think it's on par. I, yeah. I think it's, it's just as good as the, the original guardians. What, what about you? I, I totally agree. It's just as good as the original. Mm-hmm. So it's everything you could at least hope for in a sequel that it'll be just yeah. as good as the original. Exactly. Like the villain doesn't feel better or worse than Ronan. Uh, every character feels about on par with where they were at. The only thing I would say is the difference is the themes of the two movies. Like where, where the, the first movie's theme was misfits coming together. Uh, I think we can agree on that. Like mm-hmm. misfits coming together to form the guardians of the galaxy. This one, it was family. Like the, like the misfits becoming a family and what a family is and doesn't necessarily need to be related to itself kind of thing because you know the the obvious villain here is so again we're gonna go into heavy spoilers here so if you haven't seen the movie uh go go see see it it. (laughs) go see it you won't be disappointed but the villain here is kurt russell aka ego the living planet and i was kind of like this is the one thing that was i was apprehensive about i'm like how do you do ego without doing way too much cg because that's you know he's a living planet so at that point you have to actually like you have to CG a lot of crap to make it work. Um, and that's, that's the thing is like a lot of the, the theme connections are family because Peter's trying to bond with ego. Uh, Gamora is having her issues with Nebula. Uh, I think even Drax was kind of having 
a familial kind of thing with Mantis and Rocket, Groot, and I would actually say Yondu to some extent. So all of them were like, this was, the first movie was them coming together. This one is why they're together, mm -hmm. why they're a family. And uh, yeah, so, so I think this is actually a lot better. And, and it's funny because, you know, when I saw the Guardians of the Galaxy, I was not in a good place. Um, and, and Guardians was one of those things that actually kind of helped me get out of that place. Yeah. And this one kind of brought me back to that place a little bit, but I'm okay with it. Kind of weird. Uh, it's a weird thing to explain. So yeah, there you go. We both liked it. Uh, for you, Alex, what was good about the film that, that you want to convey? Yeah, I, I really do like the way they were able to expand on the story that was set, set up by the original. It's, as we said, with the first one, it's the band of misfits coming together, right? And even in the first one, they will explore the idea that these misfits somehow form a family. Yeah. And because obviously the first movie opens up with young Peter being taken into space when he's a child. So mm -hmm. he's taken away from, and of course he loses his mother in the same time. And so we see him lose one family to become a part of another. Mm -hmm. And this is the movie that really kind of gets in depth because the first movie is all set up. Makes sense. It's first. And this one is the one that really gets in depth with that. Yeah. Now I, I would, I would, I would agree with that. Um, the other thing I also, so we're going to bring this up a lot because here's the thing. The Guardians, like one of the things that we love about Guardians of the Galaxy was the humor. And a lot of the jokes that were being made and the jokes here are just, are even better. Yeah. Um, in some cases, like we, like we said, uh, little Groot being able to follow him around from his perspective. Uh, some of that stuff just, it either made you tear up or it made you absolutely laugh hysterically. Cause it's, it's just, it's baby Groot dealing yeah. with situations that, that we all would deal with. And, uh, he's a little kid. You know, this is not the Groot that, that Rocket knew. This is a kid trying to learn. And, and so it's funny having Rocket trying to teach him when you can't even see, like, the teaching dialogue because all he says is, I am Groot. And then you see Rocket get mad. He's like, oh, no, that's not how that works. <laughs> uh, the, the best one I would actually say is, like, when he's trying to tell him how to teach him how to how to use the bomb. <laughs> and, so you know, he, he gets the first two steps right. And then third one no that's the one that blows us all up <laughs> let's try it again uh -huh. yes yes eh, yes yeah. no <laughs> <laughs> I, I love those interactions the other thing i think that helps with the humor in just like in the first movie is drax um so dave batista i've seen him in his wrestling career i've seen him in his acting career i've seen like i've seen him obviously in guardians of the galaxy and I've seen clips of the Bond movie he was in. I think it was Spectre. Uh, and and I'm, I'm starting to see like a really cool acting career shape out of Dave Bautista. And I can't help but wonder if, when he would walk onto set some of those days, like he would literally read his lines and go, are you really expecting me to say this in this manner? No, no, no. We want you to go even more bomb bombastic than that. And uh, yeah, he, like whenever he was on, on the camera, he stole the dang show. Just with how he was, he was naturally reacting to some things. I especially love the whole uh, Mantis trying to wake him up. And he thinks that, no, it's like a booty call. He's like, I, I'm not interested in you, in you like that. That's why I called you ugly. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm visualizing you and me having sex. Oh. <laughs> I was like, seriously, man, you must have had the greatest day uh, trying to film that. Uh, or uh, the other one was the, where he's trying to calm down Peter, or he's trying to tell Peter that him and Gamora have nothing. And he's like, there are some people in this universe that can dance, and there are some that cannot. You just need someone who can dance. And he goes, and, and even better, like, he'll go into de into detail what were the stories, like, when he met his wife, and apparently he knows the story of when his parents breeded to make him. <laughs> um which is actually a really great, a really great conversation where Kurt Russell gets to go. Yes, I have a penis. <laughs> I was like, well, that came out of left field now, didn't it? Uh, but yeah, the humor is awesome in this yeah. one, uh, especially when, when it comes to obviously Groot, Raccoon, or Groot, Rocket, and, and Drax are usually the focus for the humor. But I would actually dare say a lot of that stuff uh, got also shared through Yondu. 
and a little bit through Nebula. Um, so it just got even better. Uh, so another, any other things that we liked from the movie? Yeah, uh, definitely got to give praise to the opening sequence. Yes. What? Not just... For, well, it's a, because it's actual opening credits, which in this day and age is a rarity. Yeah. And, and it's actually interesting compared to Batman v Superman, which had opening credits that looked like they were taken out of a TV movie, as mm-hmm. Robbie once put it. So... Well, and usually, like, in, in the opening sequence, when they would introduce that character, that character would be trying to save Groot somehow, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So that, that, that made it even better. So, yeah, I liked... The whole opening sequence was fun, and it was over the top, and that's what <laughs> made it fun. A lot of the movies kind of over the top and a little cartoonish. Could, could we dare say that the ending sequence was also just as fun? Yeah, absolutely. This is, like, the first time I've ever seen, like... It, well, maybe aside from other Marvel movies, but I would say this is even more, like, an interactive credit scene. Where, you know, we got, like, five whopping Easter eggs out of it, but also it was like, can you spot the cameos and the Easter eggs within the credits? Because we, like, occasionally you'd come across some credits saying, I am Groot, and then they'd fix themselves. Um, the other one that I noticed was the uh, cameo of Jeff Goldblum's character from Thor Ragnarok dancing in one of those orbs mm-hmm. kind of thing. I really like that. But yeah, that's the cool part is these the, the way this movie started and ended was great. Yeah. I would actually even dare say it's probably better than the original Guardians. Because I, I that, like that opening scene in Guardians. Yeah. But I think this is better. This, that, this does top that, the original. So yeah. there you go. There's something it can top it in. So the, the other thing that I, I want to get into is um, a lot of the characters that we saw were very familiar. Mm-hmm. But in some cases, some got a little bit more screen time than others. Um, some didn't. Because we, we kind of have their characters established. We also had some brand spanking new actors walking in. So <clears throat> the, the next question I want to get into is, obviously this is moving from one movie to another. Um, how do we feel about the evolution of the characters so far? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? Uh, maybe even give your best and worst example. And I would actually also like to extend that to, like, with the two new entries... Did they feel out of place? Did they actually feel like they were part of the movie? And maybe which one you liked? Are we, we're just talking characters? We yeah, just, just talking characters. Okay. You know, I the characters have evolved, especially when it comes to uh, Gamora and Peter. And kind of yeah. seeing their relationship start to bud a little bit and flourish. Especially in the moments where they're arguing about uh, Peter's father yeah ego you know she's trying to convince him that something's not right but of course and then and then it later on she's the she's the guy that's convincing him that something's not right Mm -hmm. while they're there you know he wants he desperately wants the father he never knew but she's trying to bring him to to think about it more logically and more seriously than he might be yeah and and of course at the when all said and done She's the one who puts on the jetpack and grabs the gun and jumps out of the ship as the planet's coming apart to go mm-hmm. save him again. And and actually get stopped mm-hmm. for it. So, yeah, yeah there you go. Um, so, yeah, so your favorite was Gamora. Mm-hmm. Um, out of the new characters, did they feel out of place? Or did, did you like how they were placed in? Like, wh- which one did you like a little bit better? Uh I, Slice Stallone's character, he was for this movie, wasn't he? Just new? I think, yeah, he, he was new, um, and I think he's also kind of a, maybe a setup for the third, because mm-hmm. they kind of hinted in one of the Easter eggs that, that him and uh, him and the other Ravagers were going to start start shit. Yeah. So. Uh, you know, it, it's fine. It's a fine cameo, but it almost feels like there might be more, mm-hmm. or maybe there should have been more with his character, because yep. it feels like, you know, you, you get a pretty big name actor like Sly Stallone and you know, don't give them a little more something to do than that, I think. Yeah, but maybe, again, you know, part of the thing that makes the Marvel Cinematic Universe really, really work is they do have those subtle setups. Mm -hmm. And I would actually dare say in the first one, that was Yondu. And Yondu got so much more screen time in this one. Uh, So, so, okay, that's where you're at with Sly. What about Kurt Russell? I liked him. I think that, that was really interesting. I thought he was a really good character, really interesting because, yeah, I did want to believe he's the legit good father trying to reconnect with his son. Yeah. And that he fell in love with an Earth Earth woman and couldn't bear to bring himself back. 
because it's too painful for him or because it could cause bigger ramifications. But of course, it turns out to be horrible. At the yeah, end horrible, of the horrible human being or yeah. a horrible celestial. A horrible celestial god. Yeah. All right. So and, and I, here's the here's the shocker. So was I, mm-hmm. uh, because I knew of Ego, the Living Planet. I knew of him. But this is this is actually an interesting movie because I got to walk in about as blind as you. I didn't know a whole lot of the expanded universe, like like a lot of space in the Marvel universe. I don't know, and so I knew the name Ego, the Living Planet. I knew he was a living planet, but that was about all I knew. The Ravagers, I've known nothing about. The Guardians, I've known very little. Uh, so I, I I actually got to walk in about as blind as you, but I really did like Kurt Russell's portrayal of Ego because at the beginning you want him to be a good guy. You want him to be the good guy, and then all of a sudden, I would I will I will actually say that I loved him, and there's one moment that made me want to hate him, and that was when he actually just came out and said, "And then I had to plant the tumor in your mother," and I was like, "Yeah, you said that with a smile, you bastard." Uh, so at that point, it's like I am immediately, and that's what a villain should do: is like you should you you should be with him one second, and then immediately absolutely hit him the next. And that that was a, a good portrayal by Kurt Russell because he still was the ego that we'd been we had been interested in in the beginning of the movie, but then we have the whole turn of like he was killing off all of his other progeny and and all that stuff. So I mean, that was that was brilliantly turned excellently executed there um so and and that's kind of where i'm at too like i i didn't mind sly stallone's cameo but it really made me wonder like why was he here Mm -hmm. aside from helping yondu's character kind of thing like helping further develop yondu uh as far as character that developed best in in this movie to me I'm going to have to, I've got a little bit of a tie and it's because of, it's because they were so deeply connected. Yondu and Rocket. Um, Because I really do like that one scene where they had, uh, where Yondu was basically telling Rocket that you are exactly how I've been my entire life and look where it's gotten me kind of thing. I really did like that scene and how, and how well it was, it was uh, portrayed because it's basically Yondu trying to tell him every mistake he's ever made and he's trying to break rocket down and you can actually see rocket getting broken down kind of thing so i i really think that the most development went to rocket as well as to yondu and it it made me actually i cared about rocket in the first movie but i didn't give a crap about yondu Mm -hmm. um this one actually made me give a crap for yondu and made me actually like when so like when they do that whole scene where he's basically killing off all his mutineers uh, and, and they have like the slow motion montage of his air of his arrow doing everything. Um, that is probably one of the best filmed, best cinematography in the damn movie. Like I love the opening sequence, but that was beautiful. Actually seeing that happen, just seeing the arrow going everywhere, creating like so many different designs and all that. That was great. So I would actually say that the most development I think went to, uh, went to Yondu as well as rocket. Mm-hmm. And then as far as the new characters, I'm kind of there with you. Kurt Russell was, was definitely the one that outshone the other, but like I said, I, I think we're going to get a volume three and it's probably going to involve the ravagers being the villain. And so Sly Stallone will be the villain. So I'm okay with that. If you want to set things up. Uh, so we've talked about a lot of the things we liked. What did we not like about this movie? It's hard. I, I, uh, well, we, we talked about Sly. Yeah, I mean... We don't know why he's there. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of almost it. I mean, other than maybe, like, you know, during, like, seeing, like, the whole, oops, the, like, blob overtake, like, Earth. I almost kind of think that was a bit unnecessary. See, and my thought, my thought as soon as that started happening, I'm going, well, that's an Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. episode. <laughs> so, yeah, I can kind of see where you're at with it. It's like, oh, well, uh, uh, okay. Do we need to see all these blobs overtaking planets? I, I well, or at least keep it in the planets, right? Because it's like, we haven't even seen Earth since we left it many, 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 many years ago in the story here. Yeah. So what what's the need to suddenly see Earth again? In any sense, right? For all we know, they're... Right. Yeah, because as a human, like, when you're looking at things from a human standpoint, you're going from Peter Quill's standpoint. He doesn't know what's going on on Earth. 
Mm-hmm. And I don't think he, I don't even think he cares what's going on on Earth. In fact, it, that gets approached a couple of times. Like, I can't go back to Earth. My mom died there, mm-hmm. kind of thing. So I'll, I'll, I'll see that. But I, I think it was more along the lines of you were seeing the the villain's plan coming to fruition, which is nice. But I think they could have like kept it with the planets established in the whole Guardians canon here yeah. already. Right, we could have seen the plant. Whereas the first couple of times we saw Earth. Yeah, we could we could have, you know, and I'm fine with like the setup of Earth when we see Kurt Russell with his with the mother. Right, that was fine. Yeah. Because that's setting up who Ego is. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we didn't need to see the simultaneous destruction of it because at this point it doesn't matter. We should just sort of see the immediate consequences of the galaxy that we're in because we're the guardians of the galaxy. We're in space. I could see Earth, you know, I, I could see a blob attacking Earth in the in an Avengers movie, right? I don't, So I don't yeah. really see it in Guardians. And I think it actually would have been more interesting to set up the Guardians in the Marvel Universe by having the Avengers trying to counter it. But they didn't even show that. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, and I wouldn't even think there would be a need for, for it. Because... Well, there would be. Because Avengers 3 is going to be Infinity Wars. Right. So. Are, are Guardians going to be in Infinities? Infinity mm-hmm. Wars? Okay. Well, then all right, you got a point there. Yeah. So, well, I mean, we could have we could have seen the planet from the first movie with the one that was ruled by Glenn Close or whatever. I don't remember. Which that one that was. actually no, we saw we saw that later on. We mm-hmm. saw we saw um, Xandar, but yeah, that, I, I agree with your concept. Is like. Now, I get the reason that they showed it was because they wanted to show, like, a modern... I found it funny, like, when he goes to show her the seed, they, they parked at a Dairy Queen, and then they show the exact same Dairy Queen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's not likely to happen, boys and girls. <laughs> um, so that's why they did that, is because everybody knew where that seed was, and so that's where it where it started. But I agree with you. It would have made more sense if it happened on the worlds that we knew about, mm-hmm. kind of thing. I will bring up another thing I didn't like... And this is a kind of a nitpicky thing, but the Sovereign. I think they were upplayed at the very beginning of the movie, but then we saw how they fight, <laughs> and I couldn't take them seriously ever again. Yeah. Um, just because they... So they fight with drones, and their drones are piloted remotely, and so what it looks like is that their, their platoon, their legion or whatever, is fighting in a giant arcade. And at that point, like... If they die, then then they get then they get mad because they lost a life or whatever. And what made it even worse was the when they're trying to get away the first time, and there's the one guy who's still in the asteroid field trying to kill them. And you had so many people gathered around him. It was like you could do it, you could do it, you could do it. And then he gets shot down. It's like you suck, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's like that kind of downplays these guys as a villainous force. Yeah, because they came off as like. Arcade brats. <laughs> it really was. It, it was funny, but it is pretty silly at the same time. Or, it, it is like straight out of the arcade. And I get the whole, I get a lot of this movie plays on sort of 80s retro aesthetics, yeah. but even that's a little pushing it. Or the other thing that also hurt it was, I think the planet was Contraxia, where Yondu had his, his little run in with uh, Sylvester Stallone, because I can't remember his, the character's name. Uh, and then you get to meet like the, the grand lady of, of the sovereign, but she refuses to step on snow. Right. So they actually have like two, two mist or two maidens, like wheeling out a blue carpet and it gets stuck. (laughs) It's like, I can't take you seriously as a villain. If that's what what I'm getting, it's just not going to work. Yeah. I, and it would work if they were. But it's clear that by the next movie, based on the Easter egg, they're setting them up to be the next big foe, or at least part a part of a big, being a big pro. Not big necessarily guy. the big foe, um, but necess- but they will actually bring forth probably one of the most powerful guardians out of it because he is a member. Mm-hmm. But I do know he starts off kind of bad at first. So, but yeah, I, I see your your point there. But yeah, like compared to say Ronan who was evil from minute one and we got who he was. These guys just didn't feel evil yeah. at all. They felt like snobbish brats kind of thing. They, they felt like, well, dudes in an ABC family series. That's the best <laughs> example that I could give, you know, or, or 
and, and even better is like they so they punish all transgressions and apparently transgressions would include just stupid crap. Uh, but yeah, that that's another one that I would say was pretty bad. Was was the sovereign? I mean, ego ultimately was the villain, but these guys were supposed to be painted as like really bad guys, and they really weren't. Um, oh, yeah, I'm not really coming up with with much else aside from that. So, the the next thing that I want to get into is your your the, the scene you thought was the funniest in this whole thing because Guardians is eighty percent humor. Mm-hmm. So at that point, it's like the scene that made you just. Rip out of your seat laughing out loud kind of thing. It definitely, if we brought it up earlier, it definitely is the moment when Rocket is trying to teach Groot how to program the bomb. Yes. And he, and, he co- cons- and Groot consistently goes for the insta-death button, and Rocket keeps trying to scold him and teach him, and it gets to the point Rocket is begging somebody, do, does anybody have any tape, tape yeah, to yeah. mark this? So and, it gets even better. Like, we have kind of a Family Guy-esque moment, except better. Um, where he's like, Drax, do you have any tape? <laughs> and they're just like, <laughs> he keeps like your me. focal point of the screen is Groot and Re- Rocket waiting while you hear off in the background, Gamora, do you have any tape? <laughs> Did you ask Nebula? Yes. <laughs> she was right next to Yondu. You didn't ask her. Yeah. That's what made that even better. Um, I like that. Another one that I'm going to mention that I think was the funniest was actually the Stan Lee cameo in this movie. Uh, probably one of the best this year. I, I really loved it. So if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, oh, it was it was when this was actually another really great scene when they tried to do like 700 jumps, and so the CG just starts warping their faces. And while they're doing that, they come across a random planet with a Stan Lee in a spacesuit. Speaking to, and I know who these guys are, the Watchers. Uh, so I'm going to I'm gonna bring Alex up to speed here. The Watchers are basically a race that exactly as their name states. They watch the universe. They watch it develop, evolve, grow. But it's like their credence that, or their credo that they never get involved. Mm-hmm. And I found it funny that you had three Watchers... <laughs> Watching Stan Lee tell all of his awesome stories, and eventually they walk off. It's like, oh, poor Stan. The Watchers aren't interested in what you have to say. So, as a Marvel comic fan, I really found that funny. Um, but yeah, the the other one, the other thing that I want to mention was the CG. Like, I thought this was getting really stupid really fast. It was when they did the seven hundred jumps. And so you got to see like CG versions of Yondu's face of rock. The rocket faces were the best rocket and Groot. Just, and of course the best way to end that is Groot just sitting there. Uh, he throws up and goes down his face. So that was another good moment. Um, oh geez. And pretty much anytime Drax talked was, was awesome. As, especially the, the, um, what was it? The the reveal of Peter's feelings for Gamora. And he's like, yeah! <laughs> it's impossible! Do me, do me, do me! <laughs> it just, it got so bad. But the cool part was that they actually flipped it and made a serious scene out of that uh, with the pools and how she touched him and, and felt his, his grief mm-hmm. for his daughter. So trying to think of other funny obviously the intro the intro is amazing and funny yeah um and and like i said the sovereign were laughable because every time they lost one of their fights like damn it <laughs> anybody got another quarter <laughs> um so yeah th- those are the funniest moments um yeah i think we've pretty much gone over everything for it uh let's go ahead and wrap things up if you were to give this movie a score what would you give guardians of the galaxy volume two I'd say it's definitely a 9.5 for me. All right. Yeah. Um, I'm kind of there with you. I'm, I'm, I'm going to say 9.5, almost 10. It like, it did a a few things weird that take it out of the 10 category, but 9.5 seems about right. Mm -hmm. Solid a in that category. Now, how would we recommend people actually see this movie? I said, 
Uh, well, I say is 3D worth it for this? We didn't see it in 3D. Yeah, it, it might be. People uh, ask why we don't see this in 3D. Because 3D is expensive, guys. Yeah, it's expensive and it's often not worth it that much. And yeah, but I would actually dare say, like, people told me that, that Guardians in 3D was worth it. So I have a feeling this would be also. Uh, this is also another one where <laughs> I kind of wish we'd gone to a different theater. One where we could have gotten, like, the luxury chairs because that would have been great yeah just being able to sit back and laugh at this movie but yeah i would i would say like if you feel like you want to see this movie in 3d i don't think it'll disappoint you yeah i think this would look fun in 3d yeah um and as far as like prime time versus like matinee Mat matinee is obviously an easy sell and i think prime time this actually would be too uh yeah. especially if you bring your friends along because it's just going to be one funny show for yeah, I mean, if, what you're, are you gonna get? if you're gonna, if you if you need a night out with friends, then go see the movie. Yeah, it, yeah. I, I mean, if you can make matinee work, then obviously this is an easy sell. But prime time, I don't, I don't think is a problem. Yeah, really, it's really. Anytime, make sure make sure everybody pays for their own ticket because yeah. I think somebody was actually telling me the ticket prices are gonna go up. Uh, I'm not surprised. To like nine nine dollars per person Ooh. for Jeez. bare minimum is like ooh. Jeez. That's nine bucks for us. I mean. Uh, I think it was like California, New York. It's like fifteen, maybe even twenty for a seat. Oh, geez, that's hard. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I mean, so just what whatever your pocketbook and whatever your wallet, whatever you can feel out is the best pricing for you. Yeah, you know, just go see it. Bottom line, yeah, go see it. You won't you won't regret it. Um, for for Marvel fans who are wondering if they need to see it to get the whole scope of the Marvel universe, no. I, no, you don't. No. Uh, that's the cool part about the Guardians movies is that, like, I would say go see Guardians 1 just so that you have some of the jokes to bounce off of. But Guardians has stayed pretty detached from the Marvel continuity. I think for now. I know that they're eventually going to get brought into one of the parts of Infinity Wars. <clears throat> so at that point, I mean, then they'll be connected. But for the most part right now, the two movies have been very fairly disconnected from the overall continuity. Uh, maybe, maybe like a cameo here and there, because, I mean, yeah, we had the Collector in Thor 2, and he showed up in Guardians, but that was about it. And we did see, like I said, we did see a cameo of Jeff Goldblum's character from Thor Ragnarok, so maybe he'll show up in Volume 3. I don't know. But yeah, I think I go, that's going to go ahead and do it for this Dracon Shadow vlog. We're back, man. Now, one thing that I do want to do as a reminder before we, we turn things off is, again, if you guys have not seen the video, we are trying to make the push to 100 subscribers. And here I actually want to add some things that if you want to recommend them, you can because we have had some uh, viewers that have, have asked. So if you want to ask, we, we said that it would be a game, but if you guys want to ask for a particular movie vlog, you can do so. Um, I don't think we have a problem with it, even if it's like an older movie. Yeah. Um, you, just, again, it's, it has lot, to be within reach. Yeah, just a lot of the same conditions apply, you know. Yeah. Should be accessible, shouldn't be too difficult to get a, our hands on, and, mm -hmm. and for the love of God, don't recommend us porn. <laughs> if you, look, if you, here's the thing, anything you recommend to us, we're going to look up. If you recommend porn, you're instantly eliminated. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We are not Brad Jones. <laughs> We're not Brad Jones. I'm not interested in reviewing porn or anything like that. I get it. And so the people are going to be like, well, but you, we helped you get 100 subscribers. Yeah, you weren't the only one that did, though. Yeah. That's the thing. We're happy to take your suggestions, but yeah. take it seriously. But we are going to do our homework. And if we can't afford it, we will obviously talk to you and let you know. If you recommend porn to us, we will probably send you a message and go, yeah, we're not reviewing this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we, we may let you, like, make another suggestion kind of thing. Uh, the other thing, too, that I want to point out is with the 100 subscribers, because people do send this stuff to me still, I'm very reluctant to point this out. But right now, as it stands, you are going to go see Transformers The Last Night, and you're going to do a solo vlog. Mm -hmm. If we Now, here's the thing. It's a month from now. If we hit 100 subscribers within a month, and it's you guys asking for me to be a part of, of Last Night... I will go and see Last Night with Alex. I will go and see it, and we will do a vlog together. If not, then Alex will see it on his own. Yep. Kind of thing. 
if we hit it later and you guys still want it, maybe I'll, I'll see if I can get it on Amazon streaming. But that is another thing that you can ask for. Uh, just again, it's whether or not it's acceptable. So yeah, I think that's, is that everything that we wanted to cover? Yes. Yeah. All right. So yeah, that's going to go ahead and do it for us. Thank you guys so much for all that you do to contribute to our channel. Thank you for liking, commenting, subscribing, recommending us via the other social networks that we don't have access to or, uh, well, don't know really how to get into. So thank you guys so much. And of course, we'll see you guys next time for the next video. So long. And the next vlog, just for, for people, is going to involve a woman with some wonder. <laughs>